Hey guys, it's Noel. This is Wheezy Tech, and on this channel, I do tech news and reviews and whatever it is that I want to talk about. So if you like what I'm doing, then make sure you hit that like button and get subscribed and all of that stuff. You know what to do. So there's been a few new updates from Moondrop in the past month or so. Uh, since my last news video, which was ages ago, as you know, it looks like Moondrop released their Nico Cake TWS earphone, which was a stem style design and a price tag of $42.99. And it's been so long since my last news video that Moondrop are set to launch a new TWS very soon called Alice. Alice is set to launch by the end of October and actually might be launched by the time this video goes live. What's that? No launch already. Alice, which has been described as a wireless Kato, is Moondrop's new flagship true wireless earphone, running the flagship Qualcomm chip, the QCC5151 chipset. Alice is said to be tuned to Moondrop's VDSF, or Virtual Diffuse Field target, and they feature the same ultra-linear dynamic driver as the Kato with a diamond-like carbon diaphragm. They also featured USB-C charging, aptX adaptive codec support, an impressive 40 hours of battery with 8 hours on a single charge, and have a parametric EQ which is available via the Moondrop Link app. This is looking very good in terms of its specs. The big downside, at least for me personally, is rather than a stem style design like they used for the Nico Cake, they seem to be going with an old school headset style design, sort of similar to Sony's WF-1000XM3s, which is not a design I'm personally a fan of. It's far too bulky for, for my personal liking, for my ears, it probably won't stay in. Uh, pricing is also a little bit on the steep side at $189.99, um, but they should be available now from wherever it is that you buy your earphones, so I'll leave some affiliate links down below. Moondrop also recently released their Stellaris, which has the physical design similar, although a little bit bigger, to their Moondrop Chew and the sexy paint job of the Starfield combined into one earphone, but using a 14.5 millimeter planar magnetic driver. So first impressions that I've seen online are that they look to be a little bit shouty. I don't personally know though, I've not heard them myself and they certainly look way too big to fit in my ears, so I probably won't bother picking them up. But if you do want to pick them up, they'll set you back around about £100 or $110. And finally, back in the end of September, Moondrop also released the Click, which is a new USB-C to 3.5mm dongle DAC for mobile usage with wired headphones and earphones and should work with any device with a USB-C port. Pricing is $19.99. There's not much to talk about, really. It's just another USB-C dongle for your phone, but of course, comes with the usual Moondrop styling and a fancy 24AWG coaxial cable with a blend of OFC and single crystal copper. Pretty fancy. SMSL have released a couple of different DACs and amps. Uh, first up is the $499 SU9 Pro, which features balanced outputs, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, the latest flagship chip from ESS, that's the ESS. S9039 Pro. On the Bluetooth side, it supports SBC, AAC, Aptex, and LDAC codecs. And the SU9 Pro also supports DSD and MQA for anybody that's left that actually cares about that. The SMSL C200 BT5 is a DAC amp combo that is a more budget offering at around $200. This one's using the ES9038Q2M DAC chip and supports balanced outputs both from balanced TRS outputs at the rear and a 4.4mm headphone connector on the front alongside the usual 6.35mm single-ended output. And as the name suggests, the C200 BT5 features a Bluetooth input just like the SU9 Pro featuring SBC, AAC, Aptex and LDAC codec support. A dream is like a seed planted in the soil of the soul. She may be very small, but in the hustle and bustle of life, she takes care of a quiet space for us. Following up on their previous release, C-Audio have announced their Yumi 2. The Yumi 2 hybrid IEMs feature one liquid silicon dynamic driver and two balanced armatures per ear. They have a shiny metal housing, anime girl on the box, I don't know what else to say, I've got no other info on this. The Yumi 2 is available for pre-order now for £173 and will launch on November the 11th for the 11.11 sale maybe? Keep your eyes open. The Hi-Fi Sundara is easily one of my favourite 
headphones. Easily one of the best sounding headphones in its price category. Over the years, hi-fi men have made a load of amazing headphones that have won all kinds of praise, but they've also made some really crazy and different headphones as well. And I didn't expect this, although I really should have, but Hi-Fi Man seems to do this thing where they throw a lot of ideas at the wall and see what sticks. And sometimes it's truly innovative and other times baffling. And that's why you get headphones like the Bluetooth version of the Ananda, the Diva, the many variations of the HE400, the HE R9 and R10. So why not? a closed back Sundara. In terms of enthusiast or high-end headphones, closed back headphones are a niche that is often overlooked and difficult to do successfully. There's definitely more to think about with the tuning of a closed back and even the most well done closed backs are often heavier, less detailed or more poorly tuned than their open backed counterparts. And if they aren't, well they're very often very expensive instead. I think that there's a big opportunity for an enthusiast tier closed back headphone with a reasonable price tag. Headphones like Sennheiser's HD6XX and Hi-Fi Man's Sundara are performance per dollar kings and benchmarks of quality that make them the default recommendations for a lot of people. And I know that there are many of us out there who are looking for closed back equivalents, a closed back headphone that brings the same levels of price to performance, but it seems to be one of those unicorn corn headphones it just doesn't really exist so it really makes perfect sense that hi-fi man would release a closed back sundara and although whilst this does look like a sundara with some wooden backs glued to the outside of the ear cups other than the frame of the headphone itself it does appear to be a new headphone entirely with different drivers so it isn't really a closed back Sundara. Although to be fair, this is exactly how it should be. Simply slapping some cups on the outside of an open back headphone does not a good closed back headphone make. The tuning and damping requirements between an open back and a closed back headphone uh, will be very, very different. And you can't really expect to get a closed back to sound the same as an open back. There's always going to be some differences in terms of staging and the low end. So it only makes sense that the Sundara closed back would actually be a very different headphone internally to the original Sundara. Now looking at the spec sheet, they're using a driver with Hi Feynman's NSD diaphragm and stealth magnets, and they're slightly more sensitive than the original Sundara at 98 dB versus 94 dB, as well as having a lower impedance at 20 ohms versus 37 ohms. So this should actually make them a good bit easier to drive. And also as expected, I suppose they also seem to be a little bit heavier at 430 grams versus the originals 370 grams. So perhaps I'll have to reach out to Hi Feynman and see if they will send me over a pair for a review, because if, if Hi Feynman can make a a decent closed back headphone with a tuning as close as possible to the original Sundara without losing too much detail or making it sound too muddy, as well as keeping the price as reasonable as the original Sundara, then I think they should be onto a real winner. The Drop Panda is dead. Now, I've been waiting to see if there was any more news to come from this, but alas, no. It seems like the Drop Panda is well and truly finished. As you might be aware, my review of the Panda wasn't exactly positive. The Panda seemed like it was clearly rushed to market with no app support for firmware updates or EQ settings. It was also heavy, expensive and muddy sounding with a total lack of any kind of clarity or detail. And as a product as delivered, it was pretty poor value. But as time's gone on since they've launched, as we dig deeper into the user experiences, a pattern starts to emerge of broken hinges and adjustment sliders, devices getting bricked during firmware updates or simply completely failing to operate altogether. The number of reports were so large that Drop were forced to open an investigation into the issues in order to get them resolved. However, information provided by Drop was thin on the ground and many users believed that they were not being sufficiently informed and updated when they were experiencing these problems. Regardless, the Panda has been out of stock for a while now. There's no indication on whether or not it is coming back, what fixes have been implemented, and there's no news from Drop at all themselves, from what I can tell, uh, at least not publicly. But thanks to a user on Reddit, we might have an answer. User Ultimation posted a screenshot of part of their support email with Drop, which they stated, Unfortunately, we have discontinued these headphones due to the many reported problems which means we are not providing repairs or further troubleshooting any longer either. My only option is to offer a return for a full refund in this case. 
This was posted on Reddit back in December 2021, which means that Drop pulled the plug on the Panda within a year of them launching. This is something that I wanted to cover a while back, but I guess it's been longer that I've been away from YouTube uh, than I realized. Anyway, I was planning on doing an update video for the Panda, and I may still go ahead with this, if nothing more than for posterity. But it's pretty shocking that uh, Drop have realized the product is so bad that they're not even going to bother repairing or replacing them because it's too much hassle that they've just decided to pull the product entirely. So it seems clear then that Drop have indeed discontinued the Panda. As for whether or not it will return at any point after a, a little bit more development time, which it clearly needed, that's anyone's guess. But for now, the Panda is dead. Right, that's going to be it for me for this video. If you liked it, then you know what to do. Hit like, get subscribed, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. And until then, have a good one.